Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, my name is Josh and in today's video I'm going to be reviewing the Always Rewards Visa Credit Card. So I'll be going over the main features of this card, its pros as well as its drawbacks. So hopefully by the end of this video you'll have a much better idea of whether or not this credit card is a good fit for you. But before we go ahead and dive into the main features of this card, if you wouldn't mind helping me out real quickly by just giving this video a like. That just helps out with a good old YouTube algorithm and also consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. Plus, if you would like to receive up to $10,000 in free stocks in a pinned comment below, I will be leaving a link to Moomoo. All you have to do is once you click on that link is just sign up for a free account and then deposit at least $100. At that point, Moomoo will be sending you at least seven free stocks worth all the way up to $10,000. Okay, so diving right into the main features of the Always Rewards Visa Credit Card. First off, we're going to be talking about points or miles and how you can earn them with this card. So you will be earning three points per dollar spent on Allegiant purchases. This is going to include air, hotel, car rental, as well as attractions. Then you'll be earning two points per dollar spent on qualifying dining transactions, whether it's dining in or takeout. And then finally, on all other transactions, you will be earning one point per dollar spent. Now for this card, there's also going to be a spend bonus as well. So as long as you're able to spend at least $1,000 within the first 90 days of having this credit card, you will be receiving a spend bonus of 25,000 points. So it's going to be worth $250 in value that you can redeem towards Allegiant flights and things like that. Now with this card, you can also receive some other pretty sweet perks as well. So just for an example, you will be receiving complimentary priority boarding and, and on free beverage every time that you fly Allegiant when you present your always rewards Visa credit card. And as we know, the beverages and food on the flights can rack up to be quite a bit. So receiving that for free is a you know pretty good value at least. And then you're also going to be getting the deal of a buy one, get one free airfare offer Anytime you use this card to purchase a vacation package from Allegiant with four or more hotel nights or seven or more rental car days on the same itinerary, as long as you call Allegiant member services for booking. So if you usually take part in vacation packages from Allegiant, then you will be getting the buy one, get one free airfare offer. Then on top of that, with this card, there are not going to be any blackout dates. There are no destination restrictions and no minimum points redemption either. So that's a pretty good perk as well. Then with this card, there's also going to be coming with the $0 fraud liability guarantee. This is pretty much standard on all credit cards across the board though, but it is a good perk because let's say, for example, you lose your card and someone picks it up and they go off and spend and spend like hundreds or even thousands of dollars with it. Thankfully, you will not be held liable for those transactions because you did not authorize them. Then additionally, you're also going to be receiving your FICO score for free whenever you would like. So that's a pretty good benefit as well if you're trying to maintain your credit score at a high level or even increase it. And then finally, your points are never going to expire as long as your account is open. So maybe you rack up quite a few points, but you're not yet ready to use them or you want to accumulate a little bit more. That way you can really live out your dream vacation, pay more and more with just your points only. Then they are never going to expire as long as your account remains open. So you're not going to have a deadline to use them. So now that we went over the main features of this card at this point in time, we're going to go ahead and dive into the APR and fees because of course this is also super important as well. So starting out your purchase APR is going to be anywhere between 20.24 to 28.24% based on your credit worthiness. Then as far as balance transfers go, starting out that's going to be exactly the same interest rate as purchases. So it is going to be anywhere between 20.24 to 28.24% based on your credit worthiness. Now, obviously this is a pretty high rate. You're not going to be receiving like a promotional offer of 0% like you see with other cards out there for like 12 to 18 months. So more than likely, it's not going to make a lot of sense to do a balance transfer with this card because you are not offered a 0% rate. However, it's entirely possible that later down the line, you might get offered like a 0% rate as a promotion to do a balance transfer. And at that point in time, it could be worth it, but just keep in mind, it's not going to be completely free. There are going to be some fees associated with the balance transfer, which we are going to cover in just a minute. And then finally, as far as cash advances go on this channel, we normally recommend to stay far away from cash advances. This of course should not be considered financial advice, just my own personal reasons. Usually with them, you'd have to pay a lot of interest plus a lot of fees as well. 
but if you do decide to take out a cash advance with this card, just know that your APR on them, it's going to be a whopping 23.24 to 29.24% based on your credit worthiness, plus quite a few fees as well, which we are going to go ahead and dive into right now. So as far as the fees go, starting out on the cash advance, as your fee on the cash advance is going to be anywhere between four to five percent. Then as far as balance transfers go, your fee on those is going to be 4%. Now, like I mentioned just a moment ago, starting out, it's probably not going to be all that worth it to do a balance transfer with this card just because the interest rates are pretty high. But again, perhaps later down the line, they might try to send you an incentive offer to do a balance transfer from one of the cards that you currently have where you might have to be paying a lot of interest on a month to month basis. And you can transfer the balance from that card over to this card. And once again, for whatever whatever time period they give you, whether it's 12 months, 15 months, or 18 months, or perhaps even shorter or longer, if you do have the interest rate of 0% for that time period, just know that you're still going to have to pay that fee. Once again, it's going to be 4%. Then on top of that, there's also going to be a late payment fee on this card of up to $40. Now, if you happen to pay late, if you slip up and make a mistake, everyone does make a mistake every once in a while and pays late, you could always try calling into Bank of America. This is the issuer of the card, and you could say that it was a one-time mistake and see if they will waive that fee for like a one-time convenience. They might waive it in that case. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. There are certainly no guarantees, but it is always worth a try. Now, just to avoid that altogether, you could perhaps try setting up auto pay, marking your counters, do whatever you have to do. Just make sure that you are paying on time. That way you do not have to pay a needless $40 fee. Then as far as foreign transactions go with this card, there are no foreign transaction fees. So that's a definite plus considering that other credit cards out there on the market. Yes, they do charge a foreign transaction fee of like 3%. So with this card, you can definitely take it with you if you do happen to travel internationally. And then finally, this card also has an annual fee as well, starting on the first year and every year after that. The annual fee with this card is going to be $59. So that's something you'll definitely have to keep in mind whether or not you're getting enough value back on this card to make worth paying $59 for. So now that we went over the main features of this card, as well as the APR and fees, at this point in time, we're gonna go ahead and dive into what I would consider to be the best things about this credit card and the worst things about this credit card. So we're gonna start out with the good things. The first good thing, of course, is the fact that you can earn those 25,000 bonus points. As long as you're able to spend at least $1,000 within the first 90 days of having this card, that's right around $333 per month, which for most people is going to be quite doable. Also with this card, there are no foreign transaction fees. So if you happen to travel abroad, this is a card that you can take with you, you can continue to use, and you won't be charged anything extra for using it. So that's a definite uh, advantage as well. And then with this card, you're also gonna be receiving complimentary priority boarding, plus a free beverage as well, as long as you show your cards, that's a pretty good perk as well. So those are the good things about this card. As far as the drawbacks go, the first one of course is that annual fee of $59. So starting the first year and every year moving forward, you will have an annual fee of $59. So you will have to evaluate whether or not you're getting enough benefits back with this card to make it worth paying $59 for. Plus, as far as earning points go, on outside of transactions spent on Allegiant and on dining, you are only going to be earning one point per dollar spent, which is definitely on the low end, which means for that for gasoline transactions, groceries, and everything like that, you will only be earning one point per dollar spent, which is going to be quite a bit lower than with other cards out there on the market. And then finally, Allegiant Airlines doesn't fly everywhere throughout the country. And I don't believe there are really any international destinations. So that's something to keep in mind. Maybe it doesn't have a destination that you usually go to. And in your case, it probably wouldn't make too much sense. So just to sum this card up, all in all for the first year alone, if you usually fly Allegiant, this card is probably going to be worth it for you. If you don't normally fly Allegiant or it doesn't fly to a destination that you normally go to or want to go to, it probably would not be worth it for you. And then as far as the second year moving forward, you're gonna to have to evaluate whether or not paying $59 for it is going to be worth it for the benefits that you're receiving back. Like do you take the vacation packages with Allegiant? It could make it worth it in that case. But at the same time, you still might be better off with another travel credit card out there on the market. But that's all we have for today's review. I certainly hope that you enjoyed and found value out of it. If you did, again, I would greatly appreciate it if you could give this video a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already, and I will see you in the next video.